Hello everyone, welcome to day 14 of our Watch and Pray devotional, day 14 of 40. Today we're talking about Watch and Pray part 2 of the series. The fourth reason why God allows us to go through trials will relate to our eternal rewards. I really like this particular point. Philippians chapter 1 from verse 19 to 26 it says for I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayer and supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ according to my earnest expectation and hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed but with all boldness as always so now also Christ will be magnified in my body whether by life or by death for to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Wow. But I live on in the flesh. This will mean fruit from my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I cannot tell. For I am hard-pressed between the two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to remain in the flesh is more needful for you. And being confident of this, I know that I shall remain and continue with you, with you all for your progress and joy of faith, that your rejoicing for me may be more abundant in Jesus Christ by my coming to you again. Therefore, we do not lose heart with this encouragement from the Apostle Paul. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For a light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. And while we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And that's Second Corinthians chapter 4 from verse 16 to 18. The fifth reason why God tests us is to know how much we love him. Let's look at the scripture um, of Abraham's test from Genesis chapter 21. It's a long read from verse 1 to 12. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and he split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off and Abraham said to his young man, to his young man, yes, stay here with the donkey, the lad and I will go yonder and worship and we will come back to you. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering, laid it on his son Isaac, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father, and he said, Here I am, my son. Then he said, Look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My God, my son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. Then they came to the place of which God had told him. And Abraham built an altar there, placed the wood in order, and he bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Isaac his son did not even fight. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. And he said, Do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him for now i know that you fear god since you have not withheld your son your only son from me if god were to test you would this be said you know concerning you if god were to test you like we said god will not test you with evil right he will not send sickness on you he will not um, cause you to have an accident just because he wants to, to test you or teach you something however when temptations and trials come we see them or we view them as tests 
all right? Because life is a test. We view them as tests. And our reaction and our response in those situations, you know, really, really matter. Would we respond by running to God and clinging to Him and holding Him and saying, Lord, you're going to deliver me out of the situation? Or would we go against Him and begin to, you know, um, um, complain and of how he has put us in a difficult situation and all of that. Would we have faith in spite of the tests that are around us? Would we believe? Because Abraham offering his son Isaac, God had already, remember God had already promised him that his son would inherit the earth. He, see, he had already given him a promise concerning his son and his son was i mean the, the 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 blessing was a huge one for abraham and abraham understood the reason why you know um, isaac was born but yet when god said to him take your only son and sacrifice him abraham figured because if we read in galatians it says that abraham figured that if God was to tell him that he should um, sacrifice his son, then it's, it's possible if God has said these things concerning my son and he still asked for his head, then it means that God is able to raise the dead. And so he was willing to do whatever it is that God, you know, asked him to do. And God gave the testimony. This is a testimony that God gave concerning Abraham. He says that I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son your only son from me. Do not withhold anything from God when he asks you to release it because there is a reason why, there's a reason why he wants to test your heart. If he asks you for something, release it. You know, tests may come in, in different methods, but I'm sure that when it comes to you, you will know that sometimes the Lord will give you instructions and say, do this and do that. Don't wait. Obey immediately and exactly. Obey immediately and exactly. John chapter 14 verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. The sixth point is that trials will teach us to appreciate the blessings of God. Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. This is the psalmist. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and to see your glory. Because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise you. Thus I will bless you while i live i would lift my hands in your name my soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips when i remember you on my bed i meditate on you in the night watches because god you have been my help therefore in the shadow of your wings i will rejoice my soul follows close behind you your your right hand upholds me but those who seek my life to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for jackals, but the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone who swears by him shall glory, but the mouth of those who speak lies shall be stopped. So we appreciate the rich blessings of God whenever trials, you know, come our way. The seventh reason is for the manifestation of the power of Christ in his disciple. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 from verse 7 to 10. And least I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, least I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me and he said to me my grace is sufficient for you for my strength is made perfect in weakness therefore most gladly I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me therefore I take pleasure in infirmities in reproaches in needs in persecutions in distresses for Christ's sake for when I am weak then I am strong. Glory to God. So in your, the moment of your trial, the power of Christ will be manifested in you. And this is our rejoicing. This is our rejoicing. When we're pushed against the wall, we know that at this point and this moment of weakness, that the power of Christ will be unleashed and be manifested. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The eighth reason why we go through trials and tests 
is to prepare us to minister to the brethren who will go through similar tests in the future. Do you see that? Do you know how many times that you've gone through stuff and even after you, 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 you overcame those things and then you find somebody else in the future, you know, who is going through the same thing. You say, I remember when I was in this situation and this is how God delivered me. This is the whole idea of having a testimony. And then you, you prepare, you to minister to the brethren through your testimony so that they know how they can handle the situation in their own um, case. Luke chapter 22 from verse 31 to 32 and the Lord said to said Simon Simon indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as, as wheat But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail So that when you have returned to me strengthen your brethren So I'm saying to you today do not let your faith fail Let your faith not fail and I pray for you that your faith will not fail so that when you have overcome strengthen your brethren are you hearing me when you have overcome strengthen your brethren the ninth reason why we go through trials is to create holy fear in us and consequently motivate us not to sin exodus chapter 20 from verse 18 to 21 now all the people witnessed the thunderings and the lightning flashes the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking and when the people saw it they trembled as stood a pharaoh this is when the lord came to visit them in the old testament then they said to moses you speak with us we will hear but not let not god speak with us lest we die and moses said to the people do not fear for god has come to test you and that his fear may be before you so that you may not see you know when you have the fear of god you know manifesting in your life you will not sin honestly when you have the fear of god i'm not talking about you being afraid that god is going to rain judgment upon you because the fear of god it's more related to your love and your 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 the depth of your relationship with him if you are in love with someone right you may not necessarily be um afraid of the person okay like in terms of saying okay maybe it's not unhealthy fear per se however you will not do anything that would sabotage the relationship do you understand what i'm saying you won't do anything that would jeopardize your your position in the relationship neither will you do anything that will sabotage the relationship because you're afraid of losing the person do you understand that so that would be like fear based on love like okay i don't want to lose this person i like this person too much i love this person too much that's the same thing the fear of the lord does it's like if you're in a relationship with him you know how much you 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 connect with him you know the fear of being separated from god you know the fear of just not being able to have this um constant um communication with him and the fact is that the more you have constant communication with the lord the less you sin basically the less you stray away the less you do things that are selfish and that's what sin basically is about sin is more of doing anything that is selfish you thinking only of yourself to the exclusion exclusion of every other person okay so that's what is sin all right so the fear of god it motivates us that this holy fear will motivate us not you know to to sin so the people stood afar off but moses drew near the thick darkness where god was so we're going to be praying and we're praying galatians chapter 2 verse 20 and personalizing it i have been crucified with christ say this after me say i have been crucified with christ it is no longer i who live but christ lives in me and the life which i now live in the flesh i live by faith in the son of god who loved me and gave himself for me glory to god father we thank you so much for your word we bless you for your word we ask you father that this word will be established in our lives in the mighty name of jesus we will speak these things we will do these things and we will keep our eyes fixed on you in jesus mighty name i bless your day today in the name of jesus and i declare that your day is productive you know and full of god's favor because you have found favor with god you find favor with men in jesus mighty name if you've not yet gone to church you're not planning to go to church do go to church all right see you tomorrow bye bye and have a blessed day